rising speed of insecurity in Nigeria raises concerns about the future of the nation. We discuss insecurity in the country today on The Breakfast. Also on The Breakfast, as poor power supply persists in many parts of the country, the federal government has quietly removed all subsidy in the power sector with a plan to gradually end subsidy on petrol. We also have analysis of the headlines on the front pages of the nation's national dailies. There's a more ahead on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. A very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning and we're live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. It's really great to be back on the screen this beautiful Monday morning. Yeah, of course, no surprises. Mercy is uh, looking extra special this morning. Um, today no, is her no. birthday. Today <laughs> no. is her birthday. Mercy, um, I'm not leaving this studio without something from you. A Don't very worry. happy birthday. To you. If I, not for time, I would have sung a birthday song for you. No, but that's okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's yeah. an extra shine. Okay. Amazing, amazing. Okay. All right, so all Messi's fans, you know how to reach her uh, so you can uh, help her enjoy her birthday. <laughs> that sounds like a promo. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, it's been a very, very, um, very, very active weekend. A lot to talk about. If we want to fit all the training issues into our segment this morning, we'll not finish. But let's start off with a look at um, uh, the political scene where a letter popped up. Uh, from the, you know, some people will say purportedly, but we won't say purportedly because it was signed, from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, uh, informing that they had uh, launched what they call a, a directorate of politics. And you can see that memo, a copy of, of it on your screen there. Um, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, led by Pastor Enoch Adeboye, saying it, it's newly released... Um, or newly created Office of Directorate of Politics and Governance has nothing to do with uh, Vice President Yemir Shibajo's presidential, purported presidential ambition, or any other person for that matter who might have a presidential ambition in 2023. And that was the immediate you know, reaction of people when they saw this memo. They said, oh, they want to campaign for Shibajo. And even some of the papers, you know, some of the blogs and, uh, you know, the newspaper. Uh, if you look at the headlines, they were very suggestive of that particular fact, and which is not it, because, I mean, if you go through the memo, the memo states that they were supporting members uh, of the church who were vying for it. And I, I know that has actually been generating a lot of conversation, especially for a country as Nigeria, where we're very big on religion, so we understand where that will come from. Yes, yes, Some yes, people yes, are saying, yes. should we meddle politics and religion? I mean, what business should <laughs> church have with politics and I all see. of that? There should be I away see. from it. Mm. But constitutionally, you want to look at it, everyone has a right you know, to be there uh, via for political office. And if the church is, because we're governed, I, I would constantly say that we're governed in bits and pieces, mm -hmm. uh, in fragments. And so you have religious organization, you have different parts. And I'm thinking that we have not harnessed the fact that we're in groups and we can achieve a lot. So imagine that the church, the mocks, and everyone is pushing a particular agenda for the Nigerian cause then we will not be where we are today. So yes, it's commendable. Uh, I mean, I think it's commendable. It's, it's a great one. But it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, having, you know, it, it's a good thing to see that the church is supporting her own and not necessarily saying, hey, you don't have to be part of politics because it's a worldly thing. You know, all of that secular conversation, always a secular thing, you can't be part of it. Mm -hmm. But people who believe in the scripture, you know yeah. what the Bible says. Yes, in, indeed. When, when you hear the, you say the letter said it's uh, set up to, that, that directorate of politics was set up to, um, to support members of the church. Um, I mean, Oshibajo is not just a member of the church, Professor Emi Oshibajo. It's not just a member of the church, he's also a pastor in the church. Um, so if, if, does it mean that he won't support him? I don't know. But anyway, let's not put words in your mouth. Um, what the, the church said was that, uh, you know, they've been, they've been um, you know, trying to sensitize, they actually want to sensitize members of the church uh, as far as um, political activities and political participation is concerned, including voter education and getting their permanent 
voter card. This is the, the media release or media reaction. Is the the uh, public relations officer of the church. He's the head of media as well. Pastor Laito Olubi, he, he said, he granted an interview. He said the uh, Redeemed Christian Church of God has been creating uh, political awareness since uh, uh, the transition from military rule to civilian rule in Nigeria in 1999, and there was nothing uh, um, new about the development. He said Christians cannot afford to act ignorantly uh, by staying away from politics because the choice of political leadership uh, affects the entire well-being of the people. So this is what uh, they, they, they have put out to the media. The memo was an internal memo that, that got leaked you know, creating this Office of Directorate of Politics and Governance. Um, but uh, they've had to now come out and say, this is why. You know, but I mean, if you talked about very interesting points you raised, Mercy, talking about um, the, the, you know, question, should the church be involved in politics? Should the church be involved in politics? Um, that is, that is, that is a, an all-important question. But you see, uh, this, they say that bad things happen when good people do nothing. Do you understand? Bad things happen when good people do nothing. Um, in, in Christendom, people have sat back for years saying that politics was for the dirty people. You know, it was for the sinners. So if you are in politics, you have to be a sinner to be a successful politician. And uh, some part, some aspect, some segment of the church has enforced or reinforced that mindset that those who are involved in politics are dirty people. Or rather, that if you want to be successful in politics, you must be dirty. Or if you want to get into politics, you must be dirty. And I think that um, it's a welcome development for a church as big as the Redeemed Christian Church of God to realize and to, to decide, hey, we actually have power. We have the power to determine the future of this country. Because if you look at the membership across not just Nigeria, but across the world, who knows if there'll be diaspora voting to, tomorrow? They have a large following. Let's see where the power lies. Let's see where the numbers lie. Let's see where the population lies. All right? And, and Nigeria's future cannot be mortgaged. We can't sit back. So the church has to be involved. And if people are questioning why should the church be involved, but then you go back to to the history of Christianity and politics, you realize that this thing we're talking about politics, you know, and Christianity have been intertwined, you know, right from the early days of the church, including the Roman Catholic Church, you know. So what are we talking about? They are the same. No, politics so, and Christianity so, I mean, have been I'm together not actually for, on for the centuries. Side of the divide. Uh, like I rightly mentioned, if you look at it constitutionally, they do have a right because they are Nigerians. I mean, the fact that you're Christian or you belong to a particular denomination does not disenfranchise you as long as you are law-abiding and you do not constitute a nuisance. So yes, they do have a right and uh, it's very commendable, maybe, but it's not, you know... Well, let's tell ourselves the truth. No, I mean, but, you I, know, I, but, I think, but I think it's, it, it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that that would translate when you have people from the church becoming. It doesn't necessarily, it's not a guarantee that Yes, you're going to have good policies, governance. That's not it. So that's another conversation for another but, day. But to be honest, I so just, but I, I think that yeah. they have a right, and what they're doing is yes, totally, yes. you know, correct. I'm, mm. I'm also saying that maybe the marks, every other person, Should we be. need to come together. Mm. The, the Nigerian project is not a project for one person. Everybody, including the native doctors and herbalists, they All can right. come right. together. We have another that. another top trending story, and this, of course, is bizarre, really sad. I think it was um, it was last week. Uh, we saw, we, we had a trending story of a, uh, a, a, a man who went into a hospital, public hospital, public health facility Correct. in Lagos State and uh, was dressed as a nurse. And the allegation was that he was trying to steal a baby. You know, though the authorities later came out to say, oh, he was trying to steal something. He went in there and then he decided to steal nurses' clothes so that he could, um, he could uh, disguise and escape. Um, but we've been talking about this, uh, and I think I've said it before, that when we get closer to elections, I'm sorry to say this, I know that it's a lot so, so that's a conspiracy lot of conjecture, theory. conjecturing going on here. But, it is. But from my, 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 my experience as a journalist, especially on radio, mm. talking about issues affecting the nation, issues in the news, I've realized that the closer we get to elections, sorry, but the closer we get to elections, the more we hear of things like this. What is a dispatch rider doing with a baby in the dispatch box in the Sagotedo area of Lekki, Lagos State? Now, of course, those who came out to start to react to this in the way I am were a bit too hasty. 
you know, we'll be too hasty because you never can tell what could be going on. You know, but yesterday we're told that the police had launched a search for that dispatch rider, and the pictures were all over the internet. I'm happy that the media houses blurred you know, the face of the baby. You know, the police in Lagos had launched a search for that dispatch rider over the alleged theft uh, of a baby. Um, that's 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 uh, that's what the police said. They intensified the search for this this dispatch rider. So, um, f first of all, uh, it's quite unfortunate. I would say that security is still everyone's business and we need to pay attention. And if you have, because I know the dispatch rider, you have companies whose business is to, you know, dispatch goods and what have you to different location. So apart from the fact that they are looking for the dispatch rider, they need to investigate mm -hmm. if it's just an individual or it's a company. Uh, that's also another issue. It's really, really very dicey. But it brings us back to the fact that, I mean, security is everyone's business. What's the baby people, doing in the dispatch rider's well, box? That's exactly what I'm saying. What's so, the baby doing there? So, so you also have to agree with me that some of this dispatch, I mean, uh, you don't really, I'm, I'm sure that individuals can decide to say, okay, yes, we're dispatch rider. But if the investigation is going to go on, they need to find out whether it's an individual or it's being owned by a company. I mean, it's being owned by a company. We have renowned, very popular, I mean, for the fact of, you know, commercials. I won't want to begin to mention all of them. So uh, you, you should be able to understand. It, it still brings us back to the fact that we as humans need to understand that we're responsible for our security and protection. Yes. Now, what's yes, most indeed. scary in all of this, as much as we call government to be responsible, is the fact that we have lost humanity. So when I read that story, when I saw the pictures and I saw videos on the internet, it's a good time that, we, I mean, we have the smartphones and the smartphones are really working. I, I started imagining. Wow, no one could ever think that you could, that's also already also, you know, mm. suggestive. And so people could actually also consider this. But it's a lot of work for security, you know, agency. And we must commend those who actually were at the forefront of it to actually let it. So, but uh, mostly what I'm saying is this, we need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to um, the issue of security. The persons who commit this crime are not, they don't fall from the sky. They don't leave far away from us. They leave with us. We need to be part of, you know, the security. As much as we always want to blame the government. Oh, yeah, the government is not doing X, Y, Z. Oh, the government. But you need to understand that the people who commit these crimes are not strangers. They're not spirits. They're human beings. They're our brothers, like I always say, sisters, neighbors, and you see them and you know what they're doing. You should report them. Yes, I understand that the people have lost trust in the entire system, in governance and police, but we need to take the issue of security. And I commend those who actually were very alert because, I mean, it's an issue of being alert and being able. Some people say, you see the reason why, you know, the Nigerian police should continue with the search and stop. But I am taken aback. I am blown away and taken off that a human being would take another human being, a baby for that matter, put in a box and transport this baby to another location. Very sad, but that's the much that we can take at this point in time at Top Trending, our Top Trending conversation. Yes, when we return. Before we go, we, we also have to look at the uh, the the you know, news that the, the federal government um, shut down some loan companies. These are, these are loan sharks in other parts of the world, kind of loan sharks, um, over what it calls customer privacy violations. Some of them are really uh, um, well known. Um, the names I've seen in some reports include uh, Go Cash. You know Go Cash? Your answer will determine what I say to you. You have O Cash. You have easy credit, cash, cash. I'm, I'm hearing some of these names for the first time. <laughs> you have speedy choice. You have easy money. But you patronize you this speedy Shoko, person. Shoko loan. No, let me ask you now. You know, but yeah, uh, okay, that, that's, you, that's, that's one look at it. But yeah, but, no, but have, you, have you by chance, let me put this to you now, putting you on her spot. Yeah. Have you by chance patronized any of this? Loan company. I wouldn't want to put my, my financial e e e details on Okay, so you're invoking the Fifth Amendment law. No, 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 I mean, no. I, I just don't want to put my financial activities No, no, that's not it. I'm just saying. But one thing I've realized is people also need to be very careful. There are uh, some phones, like my phone has a spam fe feature that, that um, detects spam messages and then it hides them from you and then it tells you that you have some spam. Now, Messi, I've realized that you have uh, some fraudsters who sensing the desperation of some people in the country because of the economic situation, they want to cash in on, on that. So what they do is they'll send you a link, they send you a link and tell you that you have some money available for you can cash it out. 
and pay maybe you know a very friendly very very uh, a, a small interest and believe me if you click that link you you'd you'll be you know spammed in a way you know so people need to be careful about that well uh, as much as i say people need to be careful but you know that out of desperation as much as Just we a want to by the way. yes out of out of desperation most times because there always tempts an agreement mm -hmm. they usually mm -hmm. tempts and conditions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but because of the need for people to I mean, you are in, you are in need, and of course, yeah. someone is throwing this at you, and then you you don't pay attention to the details. Mm -hmm. As much as we frown at you know the the means, because I have gotten a couple of messages. I mean, that's what happened. So they begin okay. to harass a people. I've got I've gotten many. <laughs> yeah, so I've got a couple I've of them. Many, and the, the it's the same I thing. See. We're saying the same thing. So yeah. they just tell you that oh, someone you know this. You know, you be like, mm -hmm. who is this person? Mm -hmm. well, what's going on here? And, there was a the time I actually thought. They put the person's name, so there was a time. <laughs> really, let me be share this experience. And like to know, there was a time I got a message, yeah. right? And so this person is someone I talked to uh, at the time. You know, okay. we lived in the same region, so okay. the South South region. And I saw a text. Then I decided to verify the number. It didn't, you know, it wasn't really very clear. So I dialed the number and I said, oh, I have this person's number. So this oh. person is a criminal. They oh, the company. Oh, they, they I said, told the thinking, person was a criminal. That's what they said. The message they sent to me was like, this person is yeah, a criminal. Yeah, if you happens. find them anywhere, report them to the nearest police and all of that. So mm. when I saw the message, I decided to dial. I mean, out of curiosity, mm -hmm. I dialed the number. And then I found out that the number is stored on my phone. So I was like, oh my God. So this person is a criminal. They further the company. I started panicking. Then as time, you know, went on, I realized that, you know, all of those things they were saying was not what it was. It was just a way of trying to get this person to pay the debt. But I'm saying that, yes, as much as we feel that, oh, we have to be very, I mean, you don't want to put all your issues out there. The fact that you even indulge, number one, it gives you away. And most times people don't read. We, we get to sign up for all of those apps and services. We don't read the agreements. We just say, yes, I agree. Mm, mm, and so that's mm. what a lot of Nigerians have been doing. But yes, we don't, as much as these persons are here to solve problems, but I think the outcry is that, hey, the way and manner in which people are going about it yeah. is, you know, is violating the human privacy. Yeah, or privacy I, 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 I mean, people need to be careful and uh, you think twice, because this has been an issue in other countries, like the UK. I don't mention names now, but, but they, they're offering juicy amounts. For instance, Mercy, uh, this one was sent to me on Tuesday. It's an SMS. I didn't solicit for it. I didn't ask for it. I don't know them. I saw something. Well, you new. have the willpower to say I, no. I saw something new credit. That's me. Well, the other people out there. It says, dear customer, I'm not a customer. Congratulations for the beginning of your credit journey. Your available new credit limit is 15,000 naira. Get your loan now. Did I? I didn't. I never clicked anywhere. I never asked for it. So why are you sending me these? So they're even pushing it in the faces of people. You know, it's, it's, it's really sad. And then the first time I saw a message from one of these, these loan sharks, you know, um, <laughs> I saw someone's name. I was, the first time I saw it, they said, ABC, XYZ person, let it be known to you that XYZ person is a, is a criminal. <laughs> is a fraudster. That's the message. Ah. I mean, so it's this, so heartbreaking. So this guy, why it's Sabine now? Imagine say, okay, no, imagine that it was me now, that they sent my name to you. you. Know, How would you I feel? Said, ah. So I called the guy, I said, oh boy, what do you do now? Eh? We need to move on. You need to join yourself to the police. The guy I explained to me, I said, oh my God. You know, but the thing about it is people also need to go in for loans they can pay. You know, I know life is hard, it's difficult, you know, when you offer these amounts of money, but do not take a loan, you know, of paying back. You know, so don't put yourself in a trap because it's going to be, you have to borrow from another person to pay back. Look for a better way, you know. No, but the truth is, friends, if, if, you look, if, you, if you actually look at it, a lot of people are not very good at paying debt. I have had a couple of persons who feel that this is also another way to defraud. Mm -hmm. So it still brings us back mm -hmm. to the issue of integrity, mm -hmm. whether or not we like their approach. Mm -hmm. This person say, okay, yes, we're giving you. And if you have agreed to pay at a certain time, then you should pay. Well, so people take advantage. And so on the other hand, this guy is a, a profit a driven. It's a capitalist system. Mm -hmm. But hi, however, we're querying the, you know, uh, the approach and manner in which they're going about it. Yes, but yes. I, I think that all of this should have been part of the conversation agreements that people get to click yes to. So yes, it brings us to the fact that we don't pay attention, yeah. you know, to some of the things that we are agreed to. But that's it on Top Trending this morning. We'll definitely return tomorrow with more interesting conversations, generating reactions in different spaces. When we return, it will be time for us to be looking at the front pages of a national dailies. We call it Out the Press. And of course, Open Up on Qataria. All things Vinicor is on standby to join us.